Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Morris, Woodford Reserves Distillery Manager, uh, Master Distiller. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth McCall, Woodford Reserves Assistant Master Distiller. Elizabeth and I are looking forward to spending some time with you all, telling some stories, making some great drinks, and hopefully making everybody excited about the upcoming September Derby. Think about it. This year, we're going to have two derbies today, first of May, and then in September, right, Elizabeth? Exactly. So it's double the fun, right? That's right. You know, over the years, and it's been 21 years since Woodford Reserve became the first and only official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. So over 20 years, we've been asked lots of questions. A lot of these are history questions. Why bourbon and its association with horse racing and the Derby? What's this mint julep story all about? We're going to talk about those today and make a mint julep and the new Woodford Spire. An old fashioned, you might not know there's a connection between the old fashioned and the Derby. And Elizabeth will make some mocktail versions of these. So everybody can pitch in and have a good drink over the course of the afternoon. So, why bourbon? Why horse racing? Their answer is history. Our ancestors, when they came to Kentucky, they were Virginians because Kentucky was once part of Virginia. And as Kentucky was being settled, in the 1770s, these early settlers really reflected their roots. And we see from the very first Kentucky census in 1790 that most of them had English, Scotch, Irish, Scotch-Irish, and Welsh ancestry. They came from whiskey-making cultures. They knew how to make whiskey from excess grain, which, of course, in the case of Kentucky, was corn. And they also loved horses, and they loved horse racing. The sport of kings, horse racing, of course, comes to us from Great Britain and Ireland. So these early settlers brought two things with them as they came to the Cumberland Gap. Their little stills and horses. And where did they arrive? They arrived in the bluegrass region of Kentucky, the inner bluegrass region to be specific, right where our Woodford Reserve Distillery sits. And there they found lush prairie full of grass, the perfect place the homestead, and they started making whiskey and raising horses. Now, there weren't many people in Kentucky in those days, so they didn't get together very often. And that began the county fair system. So once a year, people would get together. And what would they do? They would bring their horses and they would bring their whiskey. And they would race the horses and, of course, race the whiskey, compare the whiskey. And these were point-to-point -point races. There was no oval track. It was cross-country racing, usually the best two out of three, three out of five. It was an all-day event. So people were enjoying their early bourbon and horse racing. And, of course, these early settlers had were subsistence farmers. They had it all. They raised their horses. They made their own whiskey. They grew their own crops. So most horse farms before the Civil War also had distilleries associated with them. And some of our early, early horse horsemen were also distillers. Some became quite famous. So bourbon and horse breeding and horse racing literally grew up together in Kentucky. And that's why they are Kentucky's two signature industries today. They evolved together here on the frontier. That was Kentucky. And not only are they connected via this history, they're connected via a natural resource. And Elizabeth is going to tell us about that. Yes. So the one thing that really ties the two industries together is a natural resource, as Chris was mentioning, and it's our limestone water. So for us at the Woodford Reserve Distillery, we utilize limestone water in our mash cooker. Uh, this water we pull directly from an aquifer, so it never sees the light of day. Therefore, we don't have to filter and take all that wonderfulness out of it. But what's so wonderful about it? It is that it has calcium, potassium, magnesium in it. And then of course it's iron free. And iron can really add some off notes to your bourbon as well as discolor it. So that's a really important piece of the puzzle when you're making really, really well tasting bourbon. Now the other thing is, is that with horses, and I'm a horse person, so this is just so wonderful to me, that the horses actually drink the water and then they graze on the grass. So you've got all the, the world's best race horses. Most of them are coming from the central Kentucky area, right next to the Woodford Reserve Distillery. These horses, when they're born, they are 
drinking the water, it's mineral rich. And then of course they are um, going to eat the grass that grows from the same terroir. So it is all intertwined and the two industries just couldn't be more uh, perfectly made for each other. That's right. So again, history and natural resource come together to give us these two great industries. Now what's about the mint julep? The mint julep, it's all about history again. Those same Virginians, our ancestors, enjoyed a julep type drink back in the eastern part of Virginia and they called it the Virginia Dram. It was a julep, but it didn't have bourbon in it. Can you imagine that? No bourbon in a julep. They used brandy, brandy and rum. Well, when our ancestors came to Kentucky, they didn't make brandy, they didn't make rum, they had no sugar cane, they had no orchards, and of course they began to make bourbon whiskey. So bourbon replaced the other two spirits in the Virginia Dram. The Virginia Dram also had another name, a nickname, it was called a bracer, a bracer. Our ancestors didn't have a, a cup of coffee in the morning. They didn't have an aspirin or Advil if they had aches and pains. They didn't have much of anything. But what they did have were bracers. Bourbon, some sugar, because it calmed your stomach, and of course, mint was also a calming agent. So a julep or a bracer was how you got through the day. And these horse people would have bracers early in the morning and maybe a couple over the course of the day. So our ancestors were making bourbon, racing horses, and drinking juleps. Now, we know the mint julep was very prominent in this early Kentucky culture because there was a newspaper article from 1816, 1816. We see a mint julep and a mint julep cup being awarded to the champion of a horse race. What a trophy, a mint julep and cup going to a horse racing champion. So we know this drink has been intertwined with our two industries from very, very early on. And of course, coming out of prohibition in 1933, Churchill Downs makes the mint julep its official drink. How cool is that? So again, there's this long, long tradition. So we're gonna make a mint julep right now. now Obviously, if it has its roots over 200 years ago, it's a very simple drink to make, but you have to make it right. And you'll read and see people talk about making a mint julep and making some of the ingredients like a simple syrup uh, a week ahead of time, keep it in the refrigerator. I don't hold for that. I like to make a mint julep fresh, each one fresh on the spot because everybody likes something different. Some people, I've heard say, I don't like a julep, it's too sweet. Well, don't add as much sugar as maybe you've had in the past. I don't like it because it's too minty. Well, don't add as much mint. I don't like it because there's not enough wood for reserve in it. Well, add more wood for reserve. Make the drink for yourself the way you like it or your guests if you're having a, a derby party at home. Ask people, how do you like it? Sweet, minty, and make it fresh. That way, everybody will have the julep they like. Now, we're going to start with our julep cup. And of course, tradition is metal. Why? Because our ancestors didn't have a lot of glassware. They didn't have collectible uh, derby glasses from Churchill Downs. They each had their own metal cup that they could put in their pocket, in their backpack, in their harvest sack, in their saddle bag. It's not going to break because it's metal. So everybody had their own metal cup in these early days. And that's why tradition, you make your julep in a metal cup. Of course, today they look, they look so fabulous. So we're gonna start each julep with a sweetener and we're gonna use sugar and it's best to use powdered sugar because it's gonna melt so quickly with water. And you can put a teaspoon or so of this sugar in the cup. Then you're gonna add water and it wouldn't be great if you had limestone water, some limestone water in the bottom of the cup and allow that sugar to melt and it does that very quickly. Now, time for the mint. And as I said, some people are put off by mint. I don't like a lot of mint either. So I'm gonna take one mint leaf and just gently rub it inside the cup. And that's enough to release the aroma and the mint oil in the cup without overpowering the wood reserve that's gonna come later. So put in as much mint as you want. Next, ice. And of course, we're all familiar with the wonderful mint juleps at Churchill Downs, crushed ice. Don't use cubed ice used 
crushed ice. It's a long drink. You want to pack that ice in there, but not quite yet. Get a lot of ice. Takes a little bit of time there. And before you pack, you want to put in your sipping straw and your garnish. Put that mint deep in the cup. Now, of course, we've got to add the official bourbon of Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby. 21 years now. Woodford Reserve, 1,000, 2,000. Let's put a nice sample. And we're going to finish top it off with ice. And we are ready to go with a mint julep. It's going to get all frosty on us. There we are. And look at that. It's already starting to frost up. So there is our mint julep. Now, the next drink is a new tradition. And we just, we just brought this out three years ago at the track, and it's the Wood Reserve Spire. Because as we've heard, not everybody wants to drink a mint julep all day long. Everybody should have one at least. But maybe you want something different, something really refreshing, another long drink, and that is the Woodford Spire. The Spire is inspired, good, good word there, by the Wood Reserve flavor profile. Wood Reserve has a lot of citrus character in it. It has a lot of berry fruit in it, red fruit, and of course, other good bits and pieces. But we're going to highlight those two by making a drink some people thought was crazy putting in lemonade and cranberry juice in a Woodford Reserve drink, but it really works out. So we're gonna start with some lemonade, and you can use whatever type of lemonade you want. Elizabeth will talk about that. We're gonna put in two ounces of lemonade, one ounce of cranberry juice, and that's gonna give it a beautiful rose color. Of course, run for the roses, why not? And then an ounce and a half of our Woodford Reserve. It is the Woodford Reserve Spire, after all. There we go. Of course, always stir your drink. Make sure everything is put together very well. Now, we're gonna use ice. Not crushed ice this time, but cubed ice. Proper cocktail. Mixed drink. Very simple garnish. We're going to put in a little bit of lemon peel to really bring that lemon citrus character forward. So there are two drinks that are so easy to make, each one with three ingredients. The mint julep, sugar, mint, Woodford Reserve, the Woodford Reserve Spire, cranberry juice, lemonade, Woodford Reserve. How easy is that? Now, Elizabeth is going to show us how to make mocktail versions of both of these. Yes, so thank you, Chris. And those both look delicious. Um, so I'm talking about mocktails because let's face it, not everybody is wanting to imbibe for one reason or another. And it's a great way for the whole family to be able to enjoy in this fun day. And it's a beautiful day here in Kentucky, so we should all be enjoying it. Now, I am first going to make a mocktail mint julep. And I'm going to follow in the same tradition as Chris with crushed ice. Now, I did this at home. So I have a little kind of, it's a little sack, a canvas sack that I put the ice in and crushed it. But you can use a towel. And honestly, I think I used a meat tenderizer to crush. Um, but, you know, whatever works, right? Or have a hammer, whatever. But crushed ice, as Chris mentioned, is so important. So I do have my crushed ice, and I'm going to first add that to my cup. Now, I don't have the traditional mint julep cup. I just have a glass cup, but you know what? Whatever works, right? We're, we're all kind of home right now, and I don't have a traditional mint julep cup that's of any great size, so I will put it on my list of things to get. Um, I'm usually at the track, so they provide them for me, huh? Um, no, but I'm gonna add my crushed ice right there into the glass. I've got all this beautiful mint. It's so wonderful. So aromatic, perfect for Derby Day, um, thanks to my husband. So I'm going to tuck that in the glass right there. It's gonna be wonderful. And I'm gonna add just a little more ice in that glass there. And then I actually have some um, simple syrup from Mint Tea Simple Syrup that I've just created. Um, and I'm going to pour that in my spoon 
And then just going to add that in right over the ice. Very simple there. And then I've got tea, so I'm going to just then add tea on top of that um, for the very easy mint tea, essentially. But it looks like a mint julep, and it feels like a mint julep. And so I'm going to give it a little stir there and just kind of uh, mix it up nicely. Now, to make mint tea, I mean, mint, mint simple syrup, I mean, we've got the Bourbon Barrel Foods Mint Simple Syrup. So you can have that um, if you want. You can purchase that online, um, or you can just make your, your own at home, as Chris, Chris was talking about. I'm just going to put a little more crushed ice on top of it just because, you know, it is a long drink, and I want mine to be a long drink, too. So as I sip this, I'm going to take in that nice bouquet of mint as I'm sipping, and it's just a nice, refreshing fun cocktail. And I think whenever you're doing a mocktail at home, it's really about having a great glass and a fun garnish that really elevates the drink. It makes you feel like you're a part of the party and having fun. It's better than just a plain old glass, right? So there's the mocktail mint julep. Very simple. It's just a simple syrup with mint. Um, you can make it at home. You can even muddle mint in there just to give it some of those aromatics. Get a mint spring to throw in there and um, some unsweetened tea. So I just made that at home. It was really simple, um, nothing fancy by any stretch of imagination. Um, next, I'm going to make the spire. So this is a spire mocktail. And I mean, Chris, we talked about, we play off of the flavors of Woodford Reserve. There are over 200 flavors in every glass of Woodford Reserve, all naturally part of the production process. Um, so we're not adding anything to it. Um, but when we have the the mocktail and, and having all those flavors, it gives us inspiration. So we are making for the mocktail, I'm going to simply replace the beautiful Woodford Reserve bourbon with unsweetened tea. So very simple. I've already added some ice and I have my Spire cup here. Um, it's just a beautiful kind of copper cup. And when you come to Churchill Downs in the future and order your Spire, you're probably gonna get one in one of those cups, take it home with you, fun, fun item to have. So I've got my unsweetened tea here. I'm just going to put in that, you know, one and a half ounces. So fill that up and then I've got a little touch more that I'll put in. So one and a half ounces right into that glass. And then I've got my lemonade, as Chris mentioned. You know, I think that you should definitely try to, don't just get any old lemonade, like really step it up and get a good tasting lemonade. Um, this is one that I really enjoy that I've put in here. So I'm going to add my two ounces lemonade. The fresher you can get it, the better. Um, so right into the glass. And then yes, I have my cranberry juice. So I've got that right here. I'm going to add the one ounce into the, uh, the Spire cup. I'm sorry. And again, gives it that beautiful color. It's so refreshing. I'm going to give it a quick stir. And you don't have to have fancy ice to make the Spire. And you can also do this in pitcher form. So you can just put two parts lemonade, one part cranberry juice in a large pitcher. Um, either leave your bourbon on the side oh, and also don't forget your lemonade, but you can leave the bourbon on the side so people can make their, their actual Woodford Spire or their mocktail Spire. And you can garnish it with a lemon wedge or a lemon twist if you have that. So I didn't have any lemons, sorry, Chris, um, but all right again too easy to make drinks too easy to make mocktails and again each one has three ingredients so maybe we're talking the the triple crown the trifecta of horse racing keep it simple three 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 well there's another drink that you might not think about that has a lot of association with our two industries horse racing and bourbon and that's the old-fashioned cocktail and what a great drink it is. And its origins are murky because it's an old fashioned cocktail. It's a drink that goes back like the julep into the 1700s. So no one really knows who invented it. In fact, its early name was a sling, S-L-I-N-G, a sling. And it's sugar, spirit, and citrus. That simple. Well, there was a well-known horseman who was born the home he was born in still sits behind our distillery, overlooks the distillery, and it's the Pepper home. 
because his name was James E. Pepper. Elijah Pepper had settled 1812, began distilling in 1812. Tax records show that, of course, tax records, of course. And his son, Oscar Pepper, built our distillery in 1838. The distillery we actually still use today. Of course, we've put in a lot of new equipment over the years, but it's still the same historic stone building that is a national landmark. And James E. Pepper was born on site he sold the distillery in the late 1870s, and he went on to invest his money in horse breeding. And he became one of the top horse breeders and horse racers of his era. So the story is the Pendennis Club, and this is around 1881. And he sees a bartender making this drink. And of course he made one for Colonel Pepper, who loved it, and when he, of course, took a train in those days. He took a train to New York and he's staying at the Waldorf and he asked the bartender to make this old fashioned drink for him, breads around the world. So it has a Louisville connection. It has a Woodford Reserve, a Woodford County connection, a horse racing connection. How neat is that? And it gets, it gets even better because he had a horse in the first derby with Isaac Murphy as his jockey, didn't win. But he also had subsequently named after his sisters who were born in the same Pepper House and it was now the Woodf Reserve Distillery. So again, a real neat connection. So let's make an old fashioned and it's gonna follow that simple three, three, three is best. We're gonna get an old fashioned glass and just like the julep, you're gonna see a lot of commonality here. We're gonna put in a teaspoon of sugar Again, we're going to use that powdered sugar so it'll melt quite quickly. We're going to put in a jigger of water, say an ounce of water, the same water that went into our julep, and that's going to melt very quickly. So I don't count water as an ingredient, so ingredient one is sugar. The next ingredient is bitters. Here we have some Wood Reserve's aromatic bitters, of course. It's that simple. Sugar, bitters, and Woodford Reserve. And we're gonna stir once again. And you're gonna find all different recipes for old fashions. Some call for muddling fruit, crushing fruit, such as cherries and oranges and lemons in them. But the old fashioned sling didn't do that. They simply put in some citrus, little lemon peel, and it was lemon. And we're gonna have some fun and put in a couple of Wood Reserve cherries just because it's a special day. And you can drink it without any ice, but I like a little cool drink every so often. So I'm gonna put a couple of ice cubes in. So the old fashioned is an old fashioned drink and certainly has a lot of connections to our two great industries. And Elizabeth is gonna make another special drink for us. Yes, so that looks so delicious, Chris. Um, so I'm gonna make another mocktail for you all. Um, and this is one that I kind of thought of on, on the fly, but it's a it's sort of a riff on what we call uh, the thoroughbred, the Woodford thoroughbred, utilizing uh, ginger beer. But here in Kentucky, you know, we can utilize Ale 8, a local um, kind of a gingery type of soda drink. Um, but anything that kind of gives you the spice that ginger beer can give you, or even just ginger ale, um, honestly, is just meant to be sipped on for over a, a course of time. Um, I am going to put in two ounces of my unsweetened tea. So I have my unsweetened tea here and I'm just going to pour that directly into my glass. And um, again, you can make it however, however strong the tea that you like it to be, do whatever, or you can buy some at the store if you like to. Um, so I've got my two ounces of unsweetened tea in here. Then I'm gonna add lemonade again. And so I've got some lemonade. And so essentially this is like just your simple tea lemonade sort of thing going on. Lemonade is gonna add some acidity, give a little interest to the mouth um, rather than just tea and then ginger. I've got some ginger beer here. And I'm just going to top off my glass with the ginger beer and it gives it kind of those bubbles. And I have found doing mocktails and. For those of you that don't know, I'm expecting. So um, I've been having a lot of mocktails and a lot of fun with that lately. 
And um, having some soda water, some ginger beer around just gives a little complexity to whatever you're drinking. And honestly, I would normally put a lemon wedge, but I'm sitting here looking at all this beautiful mint and um, it's derby day. And you know, I just think having a garnish, no matter what your garnish is, putting that on into your mocktail really, really elevates it. So wake up the mint a little bit. It's a great compliment to the aromas and flavors in your glass already. So again, another looks sort of like the, the mint julep I made before mocktail, but um, a little different, some more of that cit citrus notes and um, some spice character to it too. So yeah, just a nice, fun, easy drink. So it's gonna be a good day. What do you think, Chris? Oh, I think so. It's been a lot of fun sharing some stories and of course our drink recipes with everyone. It's the easy as can be. So mocktails of mint juleps and mint juleps and of course the new Spire, the Wood Reserve Spire and the old fashioned and of course Elizabeth's take on the thoroughbred, the Wood Reserve thoroughbred. All yeah. drinks. And um, I, I've had a lot of fun, Elizabeth. I hope you have. I've had a great time, and I hope that everyone at home watching has had a great time and have been inspired to maybe make a spire or one of these other fun cocktails or mocktails. And you know, if you make two Woodford spires, you got twin spires. <laughs> I love that. That's an inspiration there. <laughs> oh, of course. So, everyone, thank you. Thank you, and have a wonderful um, first Saturday of May celebration. And then we look forward to seeing you all the first Saturday of September. Yes.